As usual, no DJI secret is kept for very long. And it seems yesterday a um, Dutch retailer leaked the complete specifications of the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Deducting all the marketing mumbo jumbo that is listed on this retailer's uh, webpage, these are 23 things that you will get with the DJI Mini 3 Pro, including updated pricing and availability. This was picked up by Jasper Elms from 27 Leaks, so a big thank you for sharing this with the community. Link for Jasper's Facebook group can be found in the description below. And I gotta tell you, you are getting a lot of punch with this Mini 3. It's actually closing the gap quite significantly up to the bigger brother, the Air 2S. We all seen the images by now, and it's a completely redesigned drone that is designed with more aerodynamic features that will enhance the flight time of the drone. But I would also expect that it's much better at resisting wind because of the increased tilt angle compared to the previous model, the Mini 2, which actually is doing quite well in windy situations. Even though at some point when I saw the images, it reminded me of the Spark, they kept the fold and go design that makes it very easy for you to take it on the go. They kept the weight below 249 grams. And uh, for those of you that uh, know what's going to happen in the near future, at least here in Europe, you would know that 249 grams or drones below that will play a very important role. The flight time is bumped up to 34 minutes with standard battery. You will be able to purchase an extended or a plus battery that will extend the flight time up to 47 minutes. Imagine that flying around on a single battery of uh, 47 minutes. It goes without saying that if you're adding that battery, you will have a hard time keeping the drone below 249 grams. So be careful where you're flying when you're using that option. The camera sensor will be very good in low light. Has been bumped up to a 101.3 inch SEMA sensor equal to around 0.77 inch, which will increase the low light performance of the drone significantly compared to the Mini 2. The Mini 2 was actually performing really, really bad on the low light. And we have seen what is possible with a 0.8 inch SEMA sensor from Autel Nano Plus on the low light conditions so this is a very very nice improvement from a DJI adding a sensor type like that. It further supports dual native ISO and direct output for HDR images something that will help you with the image quality in challenging light situations. The low light capabilities are further supported by the pixel size of 2.4 micrometers as well as a lens aperture that is a 0.2 wider than the Nano Plus coming in at 1.7. The camera will be capable of recording 4K. It would be very disappointing if not, but you will be able to do it in 60 FPS. And if that is not enough for you to slow down your footage, you can reduce the resolution to 1080p and then bump the frame rate up to 120 FPS. For those of you that like to play with your footage in post, you will be very happy to learn that you will get a decent like flat color profile that will allow you to do color grading in post-production. You will get three directional obstacle avoidance detection towards the front, the back and the bottom of the drone. I rarely make use of these obstacle avoidance, but I can imagine a few situations where they would become handy. At least I know a few beginners will appreciate that feature. You will get APAS 4.0, the system that DJI has developed that will allow the drone to dodge obstacles when it's flying around. So this is uh, possible now when you have sensors on board that you can actually utilize those to make the drone go around obstacles uh, when you are flying. The connection between the remote and the drone is also super, super strong. It's going to be O3 or Ocusync 3. And with that, you will get a 1080p 30 frames per second live feed directly on your controller. Yeah, where would you else get it? <laughs> And for the US boys, this will be possible to sustain up to 12 kilometers of range. The standard controller as well as the new smart controller is capable of delivering a maximum video bit rate of 18 megabit per second. Both are also designed for low latency, ultra low latency actually of 120 milliseconds, which should make the drone super snappy and precise to navigate. You would get a wide range of intelligent features with the Mini 3. What you are actually getting, it's not clear yet. Also, the new gimbal design offers a pretty neat feature that has been reintroduced, the possibility to turn the camera just by the snap of a single button to shoot vertical video. The vertical video is becoming more and more dominant with Instagram Reels uh, with the uh, 
TikTok videos and YouTube shorts, which is something that I play around with currently releasing these short form formats just to see if I can utilize that part of the platform. So that's going to be really nice to have that um, capability at hand instead of having like the 169 video format that you have to crop out uh, to use as a vertical video. I would definitely benefit from having that feature and hopefully you will too. <laughs> Some of you are concerned about the SDK not being available from the drone right out of the gate, but this is mainly because you are missing out on more advanced features like active track, um, bot light mode, point of interest and all that great stuff. But the good part is they have included a focus track package on the drone that will give you those features right out of the box. So maybe missing out on the SDK from the start might not be such a big deal. You will get master shots where you can be your own director and uh, create some really, really stunning short clips for social media just by the press of a single button. So we have seen master shots before. I did a lot of videos with the Air 2S around that topic and I'll make sure to link that video up here somewhere. If you're into making time lapses and hyperlapses, you would be happy to know that those are included as well. You will get the panorama options, 180 degree uh, horizontal. You will be able to shoot vertical. You will be able to shoot my favorite white, where it stitches nine images to one big image. And as well as the sphere, if you want to do like a 360 image. You will have digital magnification up to four times. This is of course better than nothing, but it's likely not going to be lossless, but it is a very helpful feature if you want to scout out from the distance interesting places to fly. So these are the updated prices in uh, Euro. One thing you need to be aware of is that the Fly More combo is sold separately. So you need to add the 189 Euro on top of the model that you're picking. On top of that, you'll probably see VAT as well. So this is becoming a quite expensive drone. But this is also, as you have seen in this video, going to be a real power pack. Unfortunately, we for a long time thought we would see the drone in April, but there seemed to be introduced a delay. So we will have to go to May 10th before we will see an announcement of the DJI Mini 3 Pro. So these were the 23 things that I could have picked up around the DJI Mini 3 Pro. So what do you think about that? Even though the price is a little bit high for the hobbyist, we are getting a lot of drone. We are basically looking into Air 2S capabilities within a 249 gram package. That's kind of exciting. And that combined with the new smart controller with the high brightness display, then uh, I think that's a very, very powerful combination. Let me know if you have any comments about all this. Uh, throw it in the comments below. Let's have an uh, adult discussion about uh, what's going on. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.